Welcome to World of Marketing Podcast, a Foster Web Marketing production. Here's your host, Tom Foster. Hey, everybody, it's Tom Foster and Gretchen Upright, <laughs> and here we are on the World of Marketing, and that's how we do it. We just kick it and go. Scared the chippies out of me. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Please don't do that. That's the way. There's a theme song in there, but I haven't, st- I haven't gotten it down yet. And actually Tyson was very disappointed in me. He's like, I thought for sure you would have like a, like play some kind of riff. And he's right. I should have something, but I'm still working on it. Still working on it. And that's, you know, kind of a good segue into our topic today of produce production, production, because like a song, is a website, right, Gretchen? You have a melody, lyrics. You have an idea of what you want. It's a creative thing. You love it. It's difficult. It's hard to get it right. It takes time. It seems easier than it actually is. It's very true. <laughs> so we thought we would do a quick podcast about how to build a website or do a redesign uh, most efficiently and effectively because the big question that we often get is how long is it going to take, right? Yep. And that depends. (laughs) It always depends. Always depends. So you've been building websites for a long time. Many years, you were one of the first people that I hired way back when. You've been with me a long time. Nearly 14 years, yes. That's right. Well, thank you very much for your <laughs> great- For my service. <laughs> loyalty. Because, and so how many, do you know how many websites you've built? No. I know that we have- your project numbers and injury trial lawyer was one of my <laughs> first Davis couple michelle first davis one. yep and she's project number one of- did you hear that oh my god that was huge thunder sorry i <laughs> i know what that is thunder? Thunder. yeah that was thunder. wow that was yeah loud. it was yeah shocking i had my windows open so michelle davis Chris Davis, injury trial lawyer, is project number 156. And we are in the thousands now? I built built all of them before then. Yeah. I'll take credit for all of those before then. (laughs) (laughs) Luckily, they've gone through redesign since then, but yeah. I think we've redesigned them all. I think they're all pretty much redesigned. Yep. And uh, we're up to 1,075. So that's, wow. that's a lot. That's a yeah. lot. And that's, that, that doesn't include redesigns. Mm-mm. Nope. Which many of those, including Michelle, have had multiple redesigns. Yep. Well, that's a lot. And, um, you know, building a website, there's a lot to it. And some people... Well, most people don't know what there is. So let's talk about some of the basics of building a website. So when you build a website, you need to have consistent branding over all of your presences on the internet. So web- website is just one thing. You also have your Instagram, your Facebook. All of those things need to match because if people see you in one place and then see you, you in another like place. design? Do you mean like... The logo, what do you The mean? logo and the color scheme, the phone number, all should be the same. Everything has to be the same. Yep. And, and if you want to change colors, them, different. right. Yeah. Like if you had one place where you were pink and purple and another place where you were red and blue, people would be like, are they the same people? Because it's a right. visceral reaction when you see it. You're like, oh. The brand confusion. Yep. Exactly. 
The other thing you need is white space. A lot of people want to just keep throwing things in, throwing things in. Oh, there's space there. Your eye needs a place to rest. Otherwise, it gets so confused. And there's a theme going on here. A confused mind doesn't buy. They leave. So if you're confusing people, they're going to leave your website without contacting you. Do you have a favorite website? Right now, my favorite website is Van Smith's website. Oh, Van Smith. Oh, he'll be so happy. He Let's will pull be. up Van Smith. Pull that up. That is right. He is one of our. So I'll go ahead and share the screen. And here we are showing off Van Smith. Although he does need to get a better. Uh, image for the yes. front page. Not that it's not a bad image, it's just not high res, and you can really see it on a high res monitor. Well, no, so we had to make the couch longer. So on the right hand side, you'll see that oh, it's that actually looks like just a giant duplicate. couch. <laughs> it's not really that Biggest big. <laughs> Come sit on my couch. <laughs> yeah, the wonders of Photoshop really, with I that. I never noticed yeah. that. Yeah, so but it's yeah, those things, the really, nuances. Really well laid out it is and also the back end the stuff that we did in dss for him where it's very panel driven he can build a page with all of these panels so it's not just the home page because your home page is only but one page of your website people can come in at another page Each one of these is a panel that's a panel so tr that's called the trusted and recommended happy client panel this is a different panel here that's a different panel Yep. So you can build each one of these in DSS? Yep. Each panel is, most of them are hard coded, but there are, he has six text panels that he can build out. He can switch out the button links. Is that all? So that's like, body this is content. a panel right here that he, that he can edit if he wants. Right. That's actually the body content. So. Ah, right. So of course you can edit that. And this yep. is a little video panel. Yep. So he should probably shorten his headline because they're a little long. You know? And yep. then this is a little modules panel, book Offer panel, page. yep, map panel, contact band now panel, address panel. Yeah, yep. this is this is the way we do it now with these panels. That yep. gives you such control, and you can. This is the home page, but you can do this on every page you want. Exactly. Yep. So and so, if you look at an individual practice robust. area page, you you can build out. Your page is there as well. Yeah, that's a panel. Mm -hmm. Another panel, yeah. another panel, yeah. another panel. But I get what you mean. Like, they're just, you're right about the big white space. Yep. It's really good. And obviously, this performs really well on mobile, too. That's yeah big consideration as we're doing these designs, which is yep. something you need to think about. Yep. Another big thing that I know that um, is, is a pet peeve is images. So what, what can you say about, you know, cause we just said a little bit about it, about like, this isn't high res. Um, you want to get. It's a balance. Right. Now, Between the size of an image yeah. versus how, you know, if there's a web image, there's a high resolution image, you can compress it down, but not too far. Um, and one of the things that I don't see it as much anymore, but people would like to have the carousels in the header, but that we've backed away from that for a couple of reasons. One, loading all those images takes time. And it's mobile first now. And if somebody's on your cellular service or on a 4G, they're not going to be able to load all that stuff. Then that's not a good experience. Because it has to preload all those images. Right. So yep. it's preloading those images before you even shows one. Mm -hmm. That's just the way that those things are written. Exactly. And <clears throat> if somebody scrolls really quickly, and in this day and age of Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, people are scrolling. They're not going to see slide two or three or four. So if it's so important, you want to put it in your header, put it as next as the next panel or the next panel. So you know people are seeing it. 
Don't yeah. guarantee that they're going to see something in a carousel. Little things like that, that just exactly. experience. Yep. And Don't the other thing that. about images is royalty free images. <laughs> yeah, Go right. We've had some people get sued. Yep. And I did some research last week in doing the attribution like somebody else took this picture is not good enough. That does not get you out of copyright. That is still, you need to get permission and give them credit. So go to Adobe and buy an image. There's a list. If you Google it, you have royalty-free image sites, you can get royalty-free images. But honestly, it's worth the money to buy it, to get a subscription. If you're writing a lot of content, definitely have images because it is more eye-catching. People notice those things. People, people look at people. So that, that definitely helps people, your visitors, see what you want to highlight. And plus for, it's always good to have images for SEO. You want to have a, right. you, and you name it. You know, we talk about that on our coaching calls. And so you have a content page, let's say like Smith Strong, he, he wants to do a state, wills in the States. So he has his page and he's got an image on there and maybe it's just an image of him with talking to somebody, but that image needs to be compressed properly the, the correct size, compressed as much as you can without making it look pixelated. Right. And that needs to be named the keyword that you want that page to come up for. And the alt text is also And important. the alt text, right. Yeah, Van and, Smith talking to a state planning client. Right, exactly. So you can get the keywords in naturally, um, but also right. actually describe what it's a picture of. But you guys build all that in when you build the main site. You do yes. that for the home page and the practice area pages. That's all done. Exactly. Just even like the logo in your upper left hand right. corner. We've put all text in there for those. Yep. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the, I think that some of the pitfalls that, and I don't think that these things have changed over the years. Some of the problems that clients run into is, they get stuck on content. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, they've, okay, you guys write the content and then we write the content and they get it. They're like, Oh my God, this is totally wrong. And instead of saying, okay, let's, this isn't right. Here's, I would never say it this way. Here's how I would say this and give us feedback and instruction mm -hmm. so that we can fix it and do it right. They, they, they hold on to it and say, well, I'm going to do this then. They can't, they don't know how to do it like I can because I'm the lawyer. Am I getting this story straight? <laughs> Not so much anymore because I think more people have had websites. So they're getting better at it? They're getting better. Oh, and walking the line between speaking to your visitors versus speaking to the search engines are becoming closer together. Yeah. yeah, it is. Um, more, we have the problem of attorneys saying, well, that's not how I would say it. And then talking above their visitors. Cause you have to realize that with people on the internet are reading so quickly that you have to write at a sixth grade level. Yeah. So although you could be really smart and you are, you've gone to law school, you got to use simpler words to describe something. And you have to know what kind of content to use when and where, you know? So that's the other thing too, is that that's why your website is structured in, in the way it is. Um, you know, your homepage is basically almost your reception area where everybody comes to that for your brand. You're, 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 that's really what your homepage should be optimized for. A lot of times it will get optimized and found for your top keywords, but that's because that's where everything kind of consolidates, but it's really your brand and your bio pages are super important because of those are your brand searches for your name. Mm -hmm. Or your staff members names. Yes. Don't hide your staff members, by the way. I see that a lot. I see that where um, the lawyers are like, no, it's all about the lawyers. 
that's that might be true but people are also like they 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 work with your staff a lot and the paralegals don't hide them because they have friends (laughs) you're gonna look for them and and they have they're probably more engaged in social media than you are anyway so that's an opportunity that if you're hiding them that's dumb stop doing it stop doing it but yeah you want to get everybody's bio up there and you know so uh, get the content approved you know work with the content team Mm -hmm. when get get the images get all of the resources which is primarily approving content and getting images to you guys as soon as possible so the way we build a website is we have our questionnaire call we talk about how you want your style your tone how you want to be portrayed on the internet we write our homepage content you approve that and then we start writing more content and we start designing your site because we don't want to design your site around ipsum lorem which is just filler text when a 10 word tagline turns out to be three words and we've now have to start all over again because content drives design it's a big thing so we have to know what we're dealing with so that we can design around it instead of the opposite otherwise you're going to be stuck with saying something you don't really want to say and like this is just a a, a artful example of the way that content the design is, is is around the content yep and so a lot of thought went into the way that this was laid out just even the you know, button, schedule a consultation. Well, if it was schedule your consultation today, well, that's going to have a different feel. Because <laughs> yeah. now we have to throw it in another word, so it's going to get all off balance. And yeah. Not that it can't be changed if that's no. what somebody chooses to do. Absolutely. But we like to have it at the beginning. Yeah. And I always love these. I think these are great. These. Yeah. Dan does a great job at social media. He is my poster child for how to, you know, Facebook is one thing, um, but Instagram is another. And we're using a third party juicer IO to actually pull his Instagram feed in to his site so that you can actually see um, what he's publishing on Instagram and then go follow him if you'd like. Yeah. Oh, look. Hey, we got pulled in there. Yeah. We did the podcast of him. Yeah, he's a great client. He does a great job for his he does a great job for his clients and he runs a great firm. And he's And we were talking about staff members. What Van does is he actually has distinguished alumni on his bio page. So if perchance you were working yeah. with an attorney and they've taken a job somewhere else and you're like, Oh, remember so and so? Well, you know you're in the right place so that you can then find them again. So, yeah, I know that's a really cool idea. It is. And I love the little icons and everything. Anyway, yeah, this is our, this is uh, one we're most proud of. And um, I was looking for the, um, oh, it's got to be under. Worse. Oh, you meant the calculator. Yeah. Here we go. So this pretty cool little child support calculator that takes him. This is one of his top pages. So this is something that we helped him build. He had a vision for it. Um. And this is another thing that, you know, speaking of Michelle, something that she talks about, you know, how she, we're a big little company. We can do pretty much anything. This is an example of that, building this calculator, which is end up being one of his top conversion pages. But he was a big part of it, all of it. And, you know, you guys meet, what, once a week? or every other not anymore once a month not anymore not that you're through this so i still meet with him once a month and it's you know all but he's still got to do the same stuff still feeding content um but yeah 
So how long did this took a long time? It did. Yep. But we're always kind of pioneering in the new worlds with Van. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the nice thing is he was willing to work with us on the new functionality of DSS. So it you know it started with him and then when we built Psalm site Dragon Gym, we took it a little further. We're doing a redesign for GLM, so we're gonna think gonna take it a little bit further. So yeah. redesigns are my favorite because we have clients who know how to use DSS and have those fundamentals under their belts, and now they're gonna try and take it a little bit higher. And that's always fun. And the big thing with the redesign, the new redesigns, the version fours, is because of the panel editor. Yes being able to have such total control over each page the way that you do now. Yep. Exactly. And using the panel editor, you can build your custom pages. We touched on that a little bit with Van. So if you're doing a PPC campaign, I've seen clients send people, you know, they've got Facebook ads and they send people to their homepage. I'm like, your ad is talking about estate planning and now you're sending me to your homepage, which is talking about estate planning. Right probate, tax planning, and people get confused. So if you have a PPC ad, send them to a page that matches. So if your headline is have a question about wills, your page should also have the same headline so that people- Isn't that funny that you have to say that out loud? Like that seems like common sense, but it's true. And, you know, we talk about that every day in our coaching calls that- you know, you're talking about pay-per-click, but that's true of content. That's how you have to think of keywords that you can't have your homepage be all things. Um, your homepage is just your brand. And so if you're advertising your brand, okay, then advertise your homepage. But if you're advertising estate planning, then go to your estate planning page. And you do that whether you're, adver- whether you're paid advertising for keyword, paid keywords, land them on that page, link to that page. I would actually build another page, but that's Or me. build another one. <laughs> or organic. So yep. that page is the one that you want to come up for organic. So make sure that it's optimized. And this is kind of part of what we were talking about when we were talking about the images earlier. That's just a small, you know, another, another couple of check boxes in the Google algorithm that you have to do. Yep. So, you know, keywords in the page title, keywords in the header, H1, H2, H3, how many links? Is there too many keywords in the body copy? So that's just the content itself that goes inside the design of the website. And other things about the design of the website is that that website you want to look so good. Well, there is a balance, balancing act that you have to do as a coder and you have to work with the coders and the designers to be able to load this page as fast as possible. That's the other thing. Yes. And the other thing is, now I'm going to share my screen, is calls to action. There you go. One of the things that I learned from Ben Glass, and I don't even know if he remembers talking about it, but it was the difference between requesting a book and ordering a book. If you're going to order something, that implies you're going to pay for it. So most people are offering free, but they say, order my free book here. And that's a disconnect in people's mind. And they're like, nope, I don't want to. There's a trick. <laughs> right. I'm not going to do that. So it's request, request, request. But just even things like, you know, the most effective words are start, stop, build, join, learn, discover. You know, learn more is kind of weak. Yeah, you can learn, but start today. Stop wasting money build your yeah. future. Those words are so much more impactful. So yeah, I've got this running list of words that are, you know, only 
three days left, limited supply, closing soon. You have to hurry upwards, you know, give something a try, maybe a calculator. Yeah. So I do spend a lot of time on people.com because they have the clickbaitiest headlines ever that you're on just- what? People? People.com. Oh, God. Well, that's yeah. a great, that's a great clinic is all of those. Uh, Cosmo- yeah. Just news sites in general, what they do to to uh, the way that they the way the ads are displayed within. Start paying attention to that. You're right, yeah. because that is that those are just clinics and clickbaiting you. Exactly. Yes. So use them to your advantage instead right. of yeah. You because know, I I do read with an eye to ooh. I do want to know the answer to that question. <laughs> Because you're, I mean, like, you're right. So there's all these things that go into it. You know, no matter what, everybody's going to come to your website, to a page on your website, probably more than once, most certainly more than once, if they're going to hire you. And so usually it's assisted conversion. And that's kind of what you're talking about. You're talking about converting them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if somebody does... The way it normally works for us, and this happens regardless of what we're looking for, something like this. We have an idea for something that we either want or need. And so we might ask a friend, hey, do you know about this or about this thing or whatever? And they say, oh, yeah, here's a good brand. Or I've used this person. Oh, really? Cool. Thank you. That's all I needed for my first stage. Clickety clack on our phone or desktop, do some quick research. That's cool. Um, and then if that brand speaks to you, then you'll do some further research on that brand. If it's enough, you'll contact them. Yep. Yeah, I was talking to a client, Brooks and Crowley up in Boston, and he said, yeah. I'm an attorney. I know my neighbors. My neighbors ask, oh, do you do this type of law? And I do. And then they Google me. They know me personally, and yet they still Google me. And then yeah, they look course. at my website. Yeah, because I'm going to trust, important. but verify. Yeah. But, and, and, that's, and then they're not done. And so, so they might have even done a search for a term. And another way is they're going to do a search for a term, but, and then they find you. But then they start to verify you are who you say you are. Oh. This guy's answered my question, but is he really a good lawyer? Let me go do some reference checks. Yep. Now, this, these rules apply even more so the better the client. The smarter the client, the more research they do. The bigger the price tag, the more research they do. The more they're going to pay you, the more research they do. Yep. The less they pay you, the less research they do, the more hassle they give you. That's how it works. Oh, nice. So you want to be able to answer all their questions and then create this, yeah, I am the guy or gal, I am this person that, that, that you seek to, to fix your problems. Yes, here is an offer and the offer is the you know, five biggest mistakes or here's the, here's the, the state planning guide. Um, uh, Deloche and Hofstra has a million great examples of great offers. So does, uh, Van, well, Van and the calculator, that's another great example of like, oh, here's a something else. All these resources, people are like, wow, that's great stuff. And then of course, once you start getting the resource or using it, then the drip campaign begins. And that, to your point that you said, also branded, also bringing them back to website reminding them over and over again. And this is exactly what happened to our buddy, Kevin McManus, that uh, because of the content on his website, because of his reputation, because this guy did all this research, he signed somebody at 11 PM all online. Nice. Yep. Nice case. Perfect. His perfect client. And so you do have all the information on your website. So you'll have reviews, you'll have case results. And those are all really important to have on your website yeah. because it's social proof and it shows people that you've taken their type of case. But they are going to look at the internet for unbiased 
reviews of you. So they'll do, you know, fill in your firm name reviews. Check and see what pops up when somebody yeah, does that. Yeah, what people say about you. Exactly. And if there's something bad out there that you don't like, respond to it in such a way that says, I you know, don't, I'm not familiar with your case. I don't remember you as a client. Please give us a call at our office. So it shows that you're responsive, but it's not an internet war on the internet because that's terrible. Is that really thunder out there? It's really thunder. It's really wow, coming down. that's scary sounding, man. <laughs> Is that heading my way? I was going to go to the boat, but I don't know if that's what's going on. <laughs> that's, distracting from my, that's distracting from our podcast. <laughs> go boo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, man. Okay, I wanted to talk about uh, something else that I know is one of your pet peeves and mine too, which is thin content. Oh, which yeah. is, and uh, we see it all the time that people like, they're like, oh, I want this kind of, these kind of cases. And then they throw up this practice area page, which is like one sentence. Yeah. That's no good. That's no good. Does that work? No, no. And if you <laughs> have an idea for a piece of content, Google that idea, see what pops up on page one, and make it better. Yeah. Then answer different questions. Yeah, you know, find a gap somewhere. Call uh, me. I'll help you no. do it. I'll coach you through it. <laughs> Don't just throw up a stupid one sentence. No. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. No. And Dave Freeze does the you may have asked this question, but you really should have asked this yeah, other the insider good. baseball because people don't like to be they don't want to lose money and they don't want to look stupid. So if you've got some insider information, they so want it because it makes them look clever. And if you're going to share that with them, you look clever. Yeah. So what other, some other do's and don'ts? Reduce the number of options that you have. I don't think I said that one before because. So like on a form. Oh yeah. Don't ask a lot of questions. You don't need if it's. Yeah. If it's name and email, and then you've got all these optional fields, people are not going to see, oh, this doesn't have an asterisk. I'm not going to fill it out. They're just going to look at it and say, no, I don't even know you. Why am I telling you where I live? Right. You can get that later. Yeah. Right now, you're just trying to get them their name and email, most importantly, maybe their phone number. Maybe. But, but that uh, might be a little much too. If you're just, yeah. you know, doing an email newsletter, then just be happy with the fact that they're giving you any part of, because there is a cost to them, then they don't know you yet. So you've got to earn that trust. Right. And if you have three buttons on the top of your page and then the next slide or next uh, panel has five more questions with buttons, it's too many options. People are going to be confused and overwhelmed. So just power it down to the really the basics that you need. This is what I do. I do estate planning, I do personal injury, if you're in a car accident, and then people can go into that page where they are and they can get there immediately and then you can help them from there. So very simple. Yes, very simple. And my rule of thumb yeah. is if my mom can't do it, it's a bad idea. If she's confused, do it something else. We always say, make it kindergarten friendly. Yes. Although kindergartners are getting so much smarter that now it's my mom. <laughs> it's, she's a smart lady, but. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Common sense. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, there are differences, and I got to say it, between like a WordPress website and what we do. Um, we were just talking about it. It looks pretty, but there's a cost to make it look pretty. And if you're not balancing the cost of that with speed, because that is what Google's looking at, is how fast websites load and grading you on it. Because and they want the experience to be good because they're being judged on the results that they've provided. So right. make sure you keep coming back to them. Right. So you've got to be careful about, oh, this looks so good. It was just so easy to throw together. Well, there's a lot of code that goes into making it so easy to throw together. So just be careful. Yep. 
But with, with us, you don't need to worry about any of that because Gretchen will cook your website so perfectly well done and um or exactly rare you want it right <laughs> exactly <laughs> how you want it. exactly yeah and um get you going anything else you want to no nope. that's what i got um, My notes. Oh, just the other thing about redesigns mm -hmm. so because most people have websites are not like it's very rare that we come across people that don't have a website they're like mm -hmm. what websites that's a thing that's a very rare occurrence um but by rule every two years every two years you should probably be upgrading redesigning your website they and get evaluating old. what you have on your existing website, what's working, yep. what's not working. It was part of our redesign process. Our front end development team goes through the code to see what we've added over the years. I just, you know, I was talking to Tiffany at GLM earlier and it's like, okay, we've got this tag and this tag and this code. Do you need all of this? And three out of the four was yes, but there's one that we are loading that we don't need to. And that, everything has a cost associated to load. So if we can get rid of those, that junk, recondo your website. And it loads we faster. Will. It does, yep. And even just doing yep. a content audit, what people yeah, are finding, what audits, they're not. Yep. yep. All that stuff, of course, backlink audits, just making sure everything is clean because yep. like anything else, it get, needs to be tidied up and cleaned up Mm -hmm. and you want to take advantage of the new technologies out there and like this panel builder is pretty cool so if you want to know more about it we're happy to give you a demo show you the panel editor panel builder and how you can make your website super cool and super editable editable super editable super editable in dss Indeed. All right, Gretchen. Well, thank you so much for spending your Friday afternoon during a severe thunderstorm. <laughs> Although I still have power, so that's good. <laughs> Looks sunny over there. It wasn't like ominous looking. Although when the thunder was going off, it was a little rattly and probably because I jumped. <laughs> like ah. what? All right. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, everybody. It's Tom Foster and my buddy, Gretchen Upright at The World of Marketing. We will see you all soon.